first round. And you, I mean, it, it was not pretty. So what we, we've done this time, there are some changes. And as we're being told, it's, it's gonna continue to change a little bit. But we thought it'd be a good opportunity for those of you with any questions this time to you know, have an opportunity to speak to Stephanie and David, and I'm, I may even, JC, if you're willing, we may have you kind of chime in a little bit too. Um, well, Ste Stephanie can tell you that I've never made an SBA loan in my life. <laughs> okay, um, never mind. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm here supporting Tracy uh, and okay. Gerard, uh, who uh, we work with uh, a lot on trying to uh, help meet the needs of underserved and uh, financially and economically disadvantaged businesses in the community. That's great. Um, Stephanie is the expert. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so at this time, really, I mean, looking at the mix here, we have newbies, we have people that, you know, really haven't um, got a track record of income from last year. Um, I, I'm sure that's gonna be an emphasis, but. Stephanie, if you want to just chime in with where you think things are right now. Yeah, Joan. Because this is recording and we want other people that couldn't make it tonight benefit from it. If anybody's speaking, and then if you have a question, if you would just identify yourself, if you don't mind, that way we have, and then if we can answer your question tonight, we can get back to that person to answer it, Stephanie or David uh, at another time. So if you wouldn't mind just identifying yourself, that would be great. Yeah, and also you can tell this is pretty, this is an intimate group. This is not gonna be very formal. Um, this is just a, you know, in lieu of us sitting around a table and brainstorming, that's what we're doing tonight. So don't hesitate, throw your questions out. Um, this is a rare opportunity to really speak with two experts right here, David Zuckerman, CPA, and Stephanie with Incredible Bank. So Stephanie, take it. Well, thank you so much again for having me. Always a pleasure. I think this is a fantastic group of professionals and members of our community. So um, when, you know, when COVID hit, we all really have been together to try to help each other as much as we possibly can. And it's about uh, providing information and access to all the different programs that are available to us because we have to just maintain our, our community uh, for the duration of this uh, global pandemic. And I think all in all, our community has done a fantastic job helping each other and coming together. So the good news is a lot of our business owners and members of this organization um, did benefit from the first round of PPP and uh, have already spent the money, you know, uh, obviously, because it was uh, they had to maintain it and use it as, as needed. And now we have a PPP2. They're calling it PPP2.0. So it came into effect. Uh, we opened our portal literally today, and we already have hundreds of submissions, um, and a lot located right here in Wilmington. And so the new program is $284 billion dollars. Uh, has been allocated toward the PPP 2.0, and it's been enhanced this time, which I was really happy to see. Um, there, so there are two terms. There's one term is uh, they're calling it uh, PPP second draw, which means you've already received a PPP loan and now you're applying for a second one. So they're calling it the PPP second draw. And then there's a PPP first draw. That means you didn't get a PPP loan the first time and you're applying for your first time. And they've changed it a little, which uh, is to the benefit of a lot of recipients who were not able to participate the first time around. So first draw now in, is enhanced to include payroll costs, rent, mortgage interest, utilities, and operating expenses, which include software, cloud computing and other human resource accounting needs. So I thought that was very, very beneficial. And then uninsured property damage costs related to public disturbances during COVID. So that's really helpful. Supplier costs essential to borrowers operations under an arrangement in effect prior to receive a loan in the case of perishable goods at any time before or during the life of the loan. So that's really helpful to our restaurant owners and so forth, event planners, caterers. 
And then worker protection expenditures, so PPE they're calling it, and other adaptive costs needed for compliance and government guidance related to COVID that began on March 1st. So that also has been an incremental cost. And now that can be used with this PPP money. So that's for first draw PPP. The second draw PPP, uh, so those on the line who, have, who are ready now to submit that application, uh, it's intended for this first was intended for the first harder hit businesses. So uh, entertainment, restaurant, anyone having that was shut down because of COVID for periods of time. Uh, the maximum loan size this round is 2 million. Last time it was five. So now it's 2 million is the maximum loan size. The calculation is 2.5 times your average monthly either 2019 or 2020 payroll costs, which is interesting. So you could use your 2019 payroll, which is probably more accurate because 2020 is not an accurate payroll for, for the year. And then um, entities that have a, they call it a next code uh, that starts with the 72. So that would be restaurants, entertainment, those business entities, the calculation is 3.5 times. So they're giving an enhancement to those uh, entertainment, uh, food and beverage uh, industries that have been hit the hardest. Um, and this program, they're saying the uh, sunset date, the last date for approval on the second draw PPP loan is March 31st, 2021. Uh, now, the second draw eligibility is any borrower that previously received a PPP loan, so you had a first draw PPP loan, and has used or will use the full amount of that first PPP loan for authorized purposes on or before the uh, disbursement date of the second loan. So use up your first PPP money if you haven't already to, in order to apply for a second one. And then uh, this round, you can't have more than 300 employees. The last one was 500, so they've changed that. And then the only difference again between the last one is payroll, it's to be used for payroll and other, those other allowable expenses, but also you have to demonstrate a 25% reduction in gross receipts in any of the first three quarters of 2020 as opposed to 2019. So you can pick the quarter but you have to show a 25% in reduction in one of the first three quarters as compared to 2019. First three quarters, you said, right? Yep, first three quarters. Okay. So you pick a quarter. You pick a quarter at 2020 and you compare it to your 2019 to show your quarter to quarter, year over year, 25% reduction in gross revenues receipts. Um, I thought this was interesting too, and I found this today. Again, this just came out today. So as Terry mentioned at the beginning, like the last round, when they came out with this PPP program, it was constantly being uh, deep further guidance, they call it, was being relayed. So in the, within the first two weeks of the program, additional guidance came out because questions came up and we contact the SBA and they come out with their additional guidance. So we don't have all the answers today. What we do know is if you haven't received a PPP loan yet, apply now, number one. If you have received a PPP loan already and you use it all, apply for a second one if you can show that 25% reduction in revenues. Now, some businesses and some here in this group that I've had the privilege of working with didn't necessarily have a full 12 months in 2019 of operations. Let's say they were newer businesses. So this is interesting here. So for entities not in business during the first and second quarters of 2019, but they were in operation the third and fourth quarters of 2019, applicants must demonstrate gross receipts in any quarter of 2020 that were less than 25% during either the third or the fourth of 2019. But then, um, Entities not in business in 2019, but they were in operation February 15th, 2020. You can show uh, gross receipts in the second, third or fourth quarter of 2020 
that were 25% less than the first quarter. So you can be a business that started operations in 2020 and not have your 2019 history and also be, uh, be eligible to apply. So that's good. Because we, we know some businesses that started in Q1 2020. So, um, and then the application, is, it's, it's pretty straightforward. The second draw PPP, it walks you through, it's a fillable application and it walks you through the information and it helps you with the calculation. And, uh, and then your accountant will be able to help with any quarterly financials if you don't already have them. So you can provide that documentation. They have gone, gotten a little more detailed this time around with applicant information. I read something this morning about the first round PPP fraud. It was really bad because they, there was, it was very, you know, the, we were all charged with getting the money out as fast as we possibly could. And unfortunately, some people applied that should not have applied. were not necessarily eligible or in good standing. So there has been a lot of fraud. So they beefed up this information section here about your, you know, uh, your business, uh, common management, individuals owning more than 20%. In the last five years, if for any felony, including fraud, bribery, embezzlement, they've added additional questions here to try to weed out the fraudsters, which is good. Uh, they ask you about uh, franchise information. So there may be some industry, some um, fields here that you may not be familiar with. They'll ask you, you know, fr the franchise identifier code. So if you're a franchise, you'll have to have that um, and then the, a lot of, I've been getting a lot of calls today with people not knowing their NAX code. So if you just Google uh, NAX codes, and there's a whole list of those codes, if it, and it's also on your tax return, your business tax returns, there's a little cell there that should have your NAX code on there too. What code? Go ahead. What, what code? Your NAX, N-A-I-C-S. Okay. NAX code. It, it's a field on the application. And so it'll ask you for your NAX code. And uh, if you just Google NAICS code, and keep in mind, those with the 72, those are the 3.5 times the uh, calculation. So here, for example, the restaurant code, NAX code is 722511. And then if you're in the hospitality industry, hotels, 721-110. So anything that starts with a 72, you use 3.5 times. So that's, that's an enhancement. Stephanie, I do have a question for you. Um, on the first round, uh, so I applied for forgiveness, but I haven't heard anything yet on that. Um, I did, did use the money exactly the way it should be. So it's just an assumption that it's going to be approved. Um, Ronnie is supposed to be on the call today. I guess he couldn't make it. Um, he's the one I dealt with at United Bank. Um, okay. So can you still apply if you're still waiting to see if the other one was forgiven or do you have to wait for it to be forgiven? Yeah, as long as you submitted your forgiveness, that then you can certainly apply. Um, and then you're the lender that submitted your forgiveness, they're moving through these forgiveness uh, approvals now quickly at the SBA because they want to forgive you so you can get your new PPP loan. So that'll then, be to your benefit. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and then, um, and obviously I didn't do it with Incredible Bank, but I'd probably just do it again with United. So when you say to um, apply, I don't know where to apply. I did a paper the first time. So I asked Ronnie today and he said, you're going to have to log in. I go, well, I don't know where he, what do you mean log in, log in where? So I, my first time I did it by paper. So mm -hmm. um, for United Bank, are they going to have a separate uh, sign in or is it just global? I don't, that I, I don't understand. So. Well, it's the same application regardless of the bank you go with, same like the first time around. And I think Terry, do you have the, did I send you those two applications? Do, do I have what, what? The, the two applications that you can send to the group? Um, let me look, the ones that you sent me initially? Yeah. So okay. Terry, um, if you don't have them, let me know, but Terry can send out to the group here. So you all have the actual electronic application. So yeah, you can, Thomas, you can fill out this application and just email it to United. With oh, okay. You don't time. have to log in because he, he was under the impression you had to log in this time and create an account. 
maybe they're requiring it. We are all online. So yeah, we're digital. So with us, you would just upload it with the documents and just drag and drop it into your portal. And then we, from there, submit it electronically to the SBA. So it's, it's probably better if you can do that. So ask them if they're, they need to maybe send you a login. Yeah, yeah. I, mm -hmm. Okay. And I thought he was going to be on the call today. So I thought he'd be able to take that. Side. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I would say, yes, yeah, certainly if you received a PPP loan already from a bank here in town and they're processing your forgiveness, it's a lot easier to just do the second round there with them because they already have your stuff. You're going to submit your second round pretty similar to the way you submitted the first round. Okay. Yeah. It'll, it'll be easier. Stephanie, we do have a question. Um, a couple of small business owners have asked. I think there was some changes last time due to like a small businesses where the owners really, you know, it's it's maybe one or two um, people that own a business that work in there. And uh, how they, I'm trying to remember how they put it. Um, some owners don't pay themselves. So I. I what, do you remember what the changes were last time and if they, they're in effect this time for like 1099 people and smaller businesses like that? Right, yes. Contractors, yeah. See, in that first round, it took a couple of weeks for them to realize, yes, it is eligible. So yes, contractors are eligible. Uh, let me see if I have this list. And they've increased the list now to the eligible business types to include, which is very exciting, the not-for-profit ones. Um, see here. Yeah, First Drop PPP now includes business entities, which include partnerships, corporations, LLCs, of course, sole proprietorships, independent contractors, self employed individuals are now also included, 501c3 entities, 501c6 entities, 501c19 veteran organizations, tribal businesses housing cooperatives, destination marketing organizations, and eligible news organizations. So those were all not eligible. Well, a lot of those were not eligible first round. So they've really opened it up now to almost any entity type, if you look at that list. Before it was only corporations, then they opened it up to contractors. Now it looks like even self-employed and 501s, mm. which is housing and housing cooperatives. So really exciting. And they, you know, the first time around, we ran out of money very quickly. This time, they really are trying to pace out the, I call it, the, you know, they put the money into buckets. And so they started with, they're starting with the first drop PPPs, they're kind of pacing this approval submission in portals. Like our, banks over a billion opened up today. The community banks opened up last week under a billion. So they're pacing out the who has access to this, but it's also not going to all go to, you know, like a Chase Bank, which is what happened the first time around because they had every, you know, they submitted 100,000 applications in one click of a button. And so everybody else, they were out of money. This time, they're not going to be able to do that. So they've lim they've capped the buckets to per category. So I'm thinking this time around, everyone will really have access to this money, which is great. Stephanie, can I ask a question real quick? What do you think the turnaround time is going to be this time? Well, we just opened our portal today and you have to upload the application and in those um, supporting docs. And we're having to go into every single one to make sure it's correct and missing items are almost in every single one. So I'll, I'll, I'd say it's a day or two to make sure everything's uploaded correctly. You'll get a response from your bank. And then um, banks then, we're told it should move quickly. So today's day one, so I can't give you an actual, you know, here's how long it's taken to get an approval and then how long it'll take to get your money. But the first round, we, we had money in people's hands within like three days. Yeah, it was fast. It was really fast, yeah. Yep. So we're, because they're pacing it this time though, it's not as much of a race because they're not gonna run out of money this time. So I think that uh, it, it I, in my mind, it'll probably be more like a week is probably more realistic than a 24 hour turn. So we'll see, but stay tuned. I'll let you know when we start getting these approvals and who gets their first money. So we started today. So let's, we'll count the clock and see who's the first to get the money. We've already submitted. So now it's in the SBA hands. Um, 
And then whatever what else and additional guide, like I said, additional guidance will continue to come out. What we are waiting on right now is the additional guidance on the regular SBA program. So this PPP money is for payroll and those expenses. But right now in our community, there are other needs, working capital needs and inventory needs than uh, quite frankly, expansion needs, remodel needs, you know, people have other needs right now to continue to pivot their business. And this stimulus program, uh, there is mention in this 6,000 page bill here that we're waiting on further guidance, we're hoping for, that February 1st, the SBA will again make principal and interest payments on a new SBA loan of six months and if you have the next code that starts with the 72, it's an additional two months. So you would get eight months principal and interest payments made for you capped at 9,000 a month. So we're waiting for the further guidance on that. And if you have, so my questions are, what if you already have an SBA loan and you wanna apply for a new SBA loan? Is it both or is it one of the other? Do you get that 9,000 P&I payments made on both? So that's my question that I'm waiting for to be answered by the government. And then, uh, so that's on a new loan. If you have an existing SBA loan, the bill reads that P&I payments will may, be made for you again, like they were the last time, uh, for three months. So we're waiting on that uh, confirmation. When does that start? Is it effective February 1st? So we're waiting on that. So if you have an existing SBA loan, so that's great. So would that be an additional three months on the year? Because I think it was 12 months on the original. So the extra three months would go into after that anniversary of a year. So it's actually 15 months or no? No, this is for a regular SBA loan. This is not the PPP loan. So this is no. if you got an SBA loan to buy a business or buy a building or a partnership buyout or equipment. If you had a regular SBA, they call it 7A loan. Okay, it's not the idle. It's not the idle you're talking No, it's not the idle. That's disaster relief. This is just if you had a regular small business okay. loan. Okay. The government is making P&I payments for you up to 9,000 a month. So we had a lot of customers that had existing SBA loans. And in the last package, the government made their P&I payments for them for six months. Pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. So more, so more help is coming now with this. So existing SBA loans, the government will make your payments for you, and it's capped at nine thousand a month. So this is not having anything to do with the EIDL, right? No, that's completely different. So EIDL is the Economic Injury Disaster Relief Loan. So that was a separate loan provided by the government just for disaster relief. Okay, so you don't have no update information on that, or is that the same as last time? The uh, EIDL, there is no draw. That one is not opening up from what we see here. There, there is talk of a, the regular EIDL opening back up. For that, go to sba.gov, and you would apply there. Here, I'll go right now to see if it's open yet. And so that is the... Economic Injury Disaster Relief. So let's see. And so you would apply directly there. And that's probably what you were talking about, Joan, which is the, the it's a 30-year loan at 3.75% for businesses. Mm -hmm. And so that's for disaster relief. But I, I, I guess I'm just not remembering. I thought they were deferring some payments on that Yes. Yep. It was deferred for a year. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. So you, that you would apply directly with the government. And it was interesting because you applied the last time you just applied. And then I had customers that called and said, well, I just got $150,000 and they didn't know where it came from. And it's sure enough, it was an idle loan that just hit their account. So it, it was interesting because we didn't quite know exactly what the formula was. You just had to enter all your business information and your sales and your uh, net operating income, and they would tell you if you were approved or not, and they would determine the amount. So yeah, here you go. So it, I just, I'm on the sba.gov website right now, 
and you can click the button that says apply now and you could apply for one of these loans here. So it's open. But Stephanie, uh, at one point I, um, when we were looking at the idle loans, I know this is not the bank related loan, but um, it mentioned something about having to collateralize over 25,000. Do you know was that correct or not? Or can you go to the limit without collateral? It says on here exactly the same. You're right. Yeah, Requ for loans over 25,000, there are collateral requirements. And so the SVA uses a general security UCC agreement uh, for all business assets, uh, machinery, equipment, FF and E. So yes, they're going to look at the collateral that your business uh, has on the business balance sheet and yeah. your personal information. And that changed and that changed a few months after the initial was out because originally it was 150,000 mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden they reduced it. So for people that applied for it exactly um, on, I think it was on April 6th or something, they thought it was 150,000. If it took three months to process or two months to process their loan or get their loan package, they weren't able, I know, cause I experienced it with, a, with someone I'm associated with, you weren't able to reduce the amount to the 25,000. They were offering you the 150, but you couldn't reduce it in order to not to have to put collateral up. <laughs> yep, exactly, yeah, right, exactly, yeah. You couldn't determine how much you wanted to borrow. It was all of a sudden you're approved for this amount and it was, you know, it was a set amount. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then look, there's a targeted EIDL advance uh, it says it's up to $10,000. So the last time they did this advance and it was forgivable this time they're doing it again, but they're, they're calling it a targeted advance for uh, part of the economic aid to uh, for the hard hit small businesses, nonprofits and venue act. So it's targeted towards low income communities with additional funds to ensure small businesses continue to adapt and are resilient. So this is up to 10,000 will be available to applicants located in low income communities who previously received an EIDL advance for less than 10,000 or those who applied but received no funds due to lack of program funding. So there you go. So, and it also has the apply here. So that's for the advance. Is that advance still tied on the amount of employees like it was last year? Uh, it says you have to demonstrate 30% reduction in revenue and you have to be located in a low income community. And there's a link there that sh I guess you probably enter your, from your address to see if you're located in one of those low income communities. Okay. But I do okay. not see anything on here about a uh, number of employees. It says the advance that was the one. That and that's the idle, right? Yep, that's the idle advance. And then there's the idle. So the okay. idle is the one to $10,000 that they just give you as the grant. One to ten thousand. Mm -hmm. So if you just go to sba.gov, though, it has, it walks you through those two programs, and there's an apply here button. Okay. And you'll see which one you could apply for there. I have a question about that. Um, I received the ten thousand dollar advance, and um, I've heard conflicting things. If that's forgivable or um, part is it? It's an advance on the PPP. I got the PPP before I got the idle. Mm -hmm. um, so it wasn't really an advance. Um, right. So is the $10,000 forgivable part of the PPP or is it, I mean, part of the idle? If you received that $10,000 advance from the SBA, which was part of this idle, and it was a grant, right. you'll have received a message that it was a grant. So if it was a grant, then yes, it's forgivable. Okay. And on the PPP, um, for business owners that are on payroll and also take um, draws, um, are when we apply for the PPP on the second round, um, can we also apply for money from the draws as well as the money that we get from payroll? How it, does it, it only says payroll here. I don't believe draws can be included and one let one question um and what what kind of proof do we need to provide for the 25 percent reduction um is it uh quickbooks is it our bank statements um is there any information on that yet mm -hmm. so uh we're having to collect copies of tax returns 
And then uh, we just received um, uh, today, let me see if I have this here, that have said you, uh, quarterly financials, if they are accountant prepared or uh, QuickBook prepared, you have to, uh, the owner will have to uh, sign those quarterly financials as attesting to their accuracy and validity. Because, it, well, tax returns are, I mean, I don't think anybody has their tax returns done for 20 yet. Right, exactly. So you'll probably just get your 2019 tax returns and then your quarterly financials for 2019. That doesn't show the reduction, though. Right. You'll add, in addition to your quarterly financials. So you get quarterly financials 2019. Okay. And okay. Yeah. And then it's my understanding, too, that um, you can still apply for the PPP second round, even though you haven't applied for forgiveness, because there's still, um, for loans under 150000 there's still working out um, the paperwork as far as um, the forgiveness. Well, you have to have submitted your forgiveness application. No. Nope. Let's see, let me find it here. Uh, they want to make sure you, well, they have to see that you used the PPP one. Use for the PPP, correct, but yes. you don't have to ask for forgiveness though. Uh, that says right here, okay. Uh, because it's conflicting because the paperwork is getting ready to change or they're coming out with new guidelines for the uh, application for 100, under $150,000. They already did. They came out with that, I think last week. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Terry, did you have that updated one? I think it was, next. A, yeah, it was a one page thing I saw. Yeah, it's down to a one pager, Ray. Okay. The, the, can you hear me? Yes. There's no requirement to apply for forgiveness. Right. For, for the PPP too. Let me see here. Uh, hold on. Hold on. You just, you, you just have, you're, you're going to check a box in the app that says that you spent the money, but mm -hmm. there's no documentation or, or requirement for an application we made. One sec. Let me see. We just got something today. And the grant is uh, not going to reduce your forgiveness anymore. Correct. Let me back that out. There were several other questions there. Ray, you're welcome to give me a buzz if you want. Okay. Thank you, David. Um, well, what, David, why don't we do this? Some of the questions that you're seeing there, what you, from a CPA standpoint, throw some good advice our way. You know, tell, tell us what you know. Um, well, there, there was a lot going on there. Generally, that's the right idea. I mean, I did want to straighten out that one part about the forgiveness, because there seems to be a lot of uh, misunderstanding about that. Mm -hmm. um, I would say here's my 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 biggest tip, probably for y'all thinking about going around the either getting a, 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 a new a first round PPP under the new rules or a PPP two is uh, um, how do I put this? Well, one, um, you know, you're, you don't necessarily have to figure this all out for yourself. Uh, you know, if you, and, and, and anybody can make this loan to you. So what I'm getting at is if you start a loan application and you feel like you're lost, you're not getting help, just dump it and go get another one. There's a thousand banks out there who want to make that loan to you. They're all over the internet. They're all over town. Everybody wants to do it. If they don't make it easy, they're getting paid. A commission to make that loan. It's a pretty significant one too. So if they're not helping you and getting you through it and answering everything in real time, making your life easy, then find somebody who will, because you're spending a decent amount of money for that. That's one. Uh, so there's no, nobody's doing you any favors by giving you a, a PPP loan. And two, you know, my clients are not figuring this out. As a matter of fact, they don't have the slightest idea of what to do or what the rules are or anything like that, because I'm taking care of it for them. And the reason I can do that is because uh, I have arrangements with, with some banks that they, uh, they have in the law an agent commission that they pay me. And then I do the work for my clients and then I get paid by the lender. So it's free to my clients. And this is a part of the law. I mean, it's a widespread thing. So if you do have a CPA, I would reach out to him first and see if he's got an arrangement like that. 
and have them take care of it for you. There's really no reason for you to fuss after all this. Plus, I don't recommend trying to guess at it yourself because, you know, there's a lot of money involved in this thing. And, you know, you make a mistake that uh, I could see, I can envision mistakes that cost you thousands and tens of thousands of dollars. So I wouldn't go it alone like that if you have any kind of choice. And even if you don't necessarily have a CPA, call around, see if somebody, you know, is willing to take on new clients who, uh, uh, you know, is, is providing that service. That would be my first choice if I was somebody going to apply for one of these loans. Uh, you get free expert advice. It's out there. So, you know, ask for it. Now, as far as the uh, uh, whether or not to get the loan, if you qualify to get this loan, you should apply for the loan. No question. You must. I mean, it's if, if, if uh, history is any indication, this is eventually just going to get given you. You know, there's really the forgiveness is so liberal on these new rules that it's hard to imagine, even if they do stick it out and make you apply for it and everything else, it's going to be easy. And the expectation is it's going to be like this one, more than likely. They're just going to let you wave it away. So um, I say definitely you go for it. It's really it's the two main factors you need to know whether or not you want to do this, whether you're eligible for this, because almost everybody I've seen qualifies on the on the income reduction. And I'll explain that in a second. But uh, it's payroll based. So you're either you either have payroll or you're self-employed and you file a Schedule C and you and you're paying self-employment tax. Uh, if either of those applies to you, then you've got a, a, a base, you know, to calculate uh, a PPP loan on. And if there's, I mean, really, I got to tell you, the number's got to get really small before it's not worth the effort, you know, to do that. Even for you guys that have very tiny Schedule Cs or whatever, I'm not saying you're going to get somebody, you know, to help you like I was talking about earlier, but it's worth you pursuing. There's definitely significant money there. As far as the, uh, Reduction, Stephanie is absolutely right. It's only one quarter. And if you can't find a quarter uh, in 2020 that you did 25% less gross sales than you did in 2019, then you you must not be in America because, you know, I've, I, I've, I've done, I probably did 15 of these today and uh, not a one did we not have a quarter that we were down 25%. And I'm talking about businesses that really for the year weren't down, but there's a quarter in there. There just is. Uh, as far as documentation goes, yeah, you know, you're, they're, they're taking, um, you know, uh, QuickBooks uh, reports and uh, bank statements. I mean, whatever you, it's pretty ad hoc at this point, but uh, whatever is the best that you can put together, you know, you should submit. But uh, I'd say the biggest thing really is make sure you're getting advice from your lender or from the agent, like I was saying, like I'm doing uh, a, a person that's, that's handling it for you. I would not wing it and I wouldn't guess. Uh, uh, like I said, there's, there's just too much room for error and too much money at stake. Well, talking. and on that though too, I mean, when the bank is responsible to underwrite the loan. So when you, let's say you just, upload all and you dump all your stuff and you tell the lender, you know, I don't even know what to do. Here's all my stuff, right? Here are my financials and here are my 2019 tax returns and here's my application. The bank is going to underwrite it. The bank's going to do the calculation. Whether you filled out your own calculation or not, we still have to do it ourselves anyways. So the bank will send you their work too and show you, you know, here's where we, what we calculated and here's what you're eligible for in terms of loan amount. You get to choose between 2019 and 2020. Do people know that? Are they going to choose the better year without knowing that? For the or does the, bank, does the bank automatically get people to put in both years and determine which is the higher year? For a payroll? Yes. Oh, yeah. We'll look at the two years and say, okay, you're, in 2019, your average monthly payroll was X. And in 2020, your average monthly payroll is a lot less. So we're the reality is we're probably all going to use 2019 payroll. I've had a third 2020 higher, but that's okay. I understand. But yeah, my point yeah, is sure. that are you automatically requiring both years of 940? Yeah, if you on in, your application, you have both years required. Well, it's the same application. Everyone's using that same application. Mm -hmm. I understand what you're saying, and and it's one year, but whatever. I, I understand. Here, so, uh, but it's possible that you the bank could ask for both. I'm not saying it doesn't. I haven't looked at the 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 portal for 
your particular bank. But the the actual app is, you know, the one 2019, uh, uh, the, the 940 for the year that you're using for your wage base. That's the one that you put in. So right. if I don't know, if I don't know that I get to pick the higher year and I pick the wrong one, I could cost myself a lot of money. Just an example. Well, I mean, when you're applying, you know what your payroll was in 2020 and 2019, right? I mean, but every, every small business I know anyways has an accountant and has a CPA for sure. So yes, they're getting this information from their accountant. But yeah, you're right. You're hundred percent right, David. For payroll or whoever the payroll company is too, right? So it's either the payroll company or their accountant that help file their taxes. I, I don't I don't know that from the com from what I've been hearing tonight it doesn't sound like it sounds like people are doing the portals themselves and trying to upload down uh, get their documents and upload them themselves and that's that's going to happen I find it hard to imagine everyone is getting uh, professional help with their applications yeah no there is I mean there are not a lot of people in the country that are providing that help so yeah if you I would love to uh be able to share your information too for sure yeah because it's very much a valuable service to help guide people through this portal i i can really only work with you know the banks that have an agency uh, arrangement with me yeah no so, we're, I, we're not uh, we're not paying uh, referral fees out the i think it's uh it's the same referral program as that first one correct basically yeah mm-hmm So when you're, when you're... As, far, as far as I know, none of the local banks are, are doing. It's only online banks. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like I said, I don't, I don't know that it matters to anybody where their loan comes from. But I guess there are also relationships to consider. So there's that. But uh, my suggestion just is always, just like with taxes, I don't ever suggest anyone do their own taxes. You should get professional help with all these things. Mm -hmm. there's, there's money involved. Yes. Um, yeah. Tom, you had a question? Well, I was just, um, Stephanie was mentioning that there was just one application, but it doesn't sound like that's the case. Yeah, there um, is one application. It's the SBA, uh, and I'm gonna email this to you right now, Terry. It's called the SB, it's an SBA form. So there's an application. It's the, the top of the application, it ends in 0417 is the number of the form. Here, I'll send this to you mm -hmm. right now. To everybody, as soon as Terry gets them, she'll forward them to me and I will put them on our website. I, we're trying to keep everything on our website even after this, you know, so those forms, we can put those applications on there also. And the only reason why I was bringing that up because David, it sounds like you're not using a standard application that Stephanie is saying there's only one. So it's only gonna ask for certain let me, information. Let me, let me clarify. I'll clarify for you a second, Tom. The uh, the ultimately the application that's filled out is the same form. How it gets filled in is usually a matter of there are different portals and there are different approaches, and you know, and it doesn't automatically steer you to the kind of decisions that I was talking about as far as determining what's the best way to to do it. Now, ultimately, you're filling in the same form, but what I'm getting at is there are uh, different sites and portals that different lenders are using to populate the forms. And they don't always prompt you about these things. And if I handed you that form and told you to fill in, you know, those parts, there's no guarantee that you're aware of enough that you would fill it in the way it's most advantageous to you is what I was getting at. Okay. But yes, it's, it's the same form. The, the act ultimately the product that's submitted to the SBA is the same form. Mm -hmm. I, I can explain another time, not in this form, if you like. Yeah, and uh, I just sent it to you, Terry. So if you want to share with the group, yeah, Joan will have this on the website. And look at this, Joan. Do you can you open that first attachment and show it and put it on the screen so they can. This is the PPP form from SBA, but he's, uh, David's right. The various banks have different ways to load the data in, but it's all going to dump into that form. So, well, no, you have to fill out this form yourself because the customer needs to attest to these legal questions. 
So uh, the borrower, the person borrowing the money. So Tom Noonan, if you're applying for this, you're going to have to uh, fill out these boxes. They want to make sure it's not your broker or your, somebody else attesting to your legal questions, you know? Yeah. But aren't those questions on the PPP portal? Uh, well, you actually, the SBA want, because they're trying to eliminate fraud, you know, a lot of people had these applications filled out by other people and made, made stuff up and that's where all that fraud happened. So they want the customer to attest to, you know, have you had a felony, yes or no. They want the borrower to actually be the one that signed if there was a felony or if there was a criminal or any of that. So you're going to have to check those boxes yourself and look, you're going to have to, um, authorized rep representative or act applicant, whoever's signing this for you then, or filling this out for you, you're know, gonna wanna make sure it was, you know, the boxes were checked accurately. This is the second draw bor borrower application. I can mm -hmm. put up the first draw next. Is there any place that you want me to scroll down to? Yeah, if you scroll down. To? All the way at the bottom, to the last, uh, page three. So here, it, it walks you through to in that this application here, what you're gonna need to provide, but then um, scroll down to the bottom there. You're gonna want to make sure, so you're gonna have to sign that. Mm -hmm. So where it says authorized representative, what does that mean if it's not like a Ray Worrell or a Tom Noonan? Well, here, uh, I provide us an authorized representative maybe someone who has POA or who was acting legally on your behalf. We've not had, uh, you know, attorneys or accountants being able to sign for a borrower. We always ask for borrower signatures, like any you know, money you're gonna borrow, right? So both of these are PDFs, but I think, I th uh, yeah, they are active PDFs. You can, they're live yeah. PDFs, so we will put them up on the website and mm -hmm. you can literally grab them from the website and use them if you want. Or as Stephanie said, you, I guess you can go out to the sba.gov, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. but you're, all those lenders have this same application, so they're all gonna send you the same thing and then you're gonna fill this out and with your professional, your accountant or whoever you're working with, uh, if you're working with David, he'll help you get all this stuff and he'll upload it all for you or you can upload it too. So to, it'll show you here too what you're gonna need. It kind of walks you through what you're gonna need to provide. So I have a question. Yes. Some of these newer um, people that are on this phone call, uh, I mean, on this Zoom, and maybe they've been in business, like you said, Stephanie, for just a portion of time since um, the start of 2020. And me, you know, obviously we have David on here and everything too, but, um, and we have you as a professional for a bank, but they have to find somebody to, to work with them. Am I, am I hearing everything correctly just so that they know in their best? No. no. no I mean, all the applications that we've received today, uh, we've worked directly with the business owners and they just, no, I'm that's like, what I mean, but they should find, either establish themselves with a, a lender. Oh, yeah. Or work with a CP, whatever they feel, whatever they the access or maybe recommendations or referrals they have. But they don't upload it directly to the SBA.gov. Correct. You upload it to the bank. That's okay. That was my, because again, I think what I'm seeing on some of the newer um, people that are on this, or they're new to businesses. Uh, they're new to business. So I just wanted to make sure they had that guidance if they did even consider doing anything with a PPP, even with limited time in business. Right. And then those are the uh, business owners that are going to work with like a David and their accountants and their uh, attorneys to walk through, you know, what they're, what they, what is best for them right now. But if you're a small business that, uh, that has a relationship with the bank, then it should be just an, a quick email to your banker. Uh, asking for the application and the portal so that you can upload the stuff to them. Right. 
Any other questions? I know Ray Worrell, you're being very quiet now. <laughs> I just want to thank um, David and Stephanie for being here tonight. Um, Absolutely. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, there are just, there's a lot of uh, information here. And again, we continue to get further information. It's just about having your documentation all together and uh, working with your team of people that can help guide you through the process. Absolutely. Are working with nonprofits now that they're eligible for the, uh, the uh, um, uh, you know, applying for a first time PPP? Yeah, and nonprofits, a perfect example, would be a good uh, entity to work with their accountants and with like a David, for example, that could help them through the process. Yeah. Oh, right. I'm, I'm president of Thalian Association and we didn't go for PPP um, the last time, you know, in the first round. But now the fact that it's opened up to some of the other uses, mm -hmm. investigate that. So yes. is that something that I could reach out and question you a little bit more on with, after I talk to my executive director? Sure. Yes. A hundred percent. Okay. That would be fantastic. I have a question. Okay. Um, so I started my business in August. So I, I don't have an accountant. I really wasn't as successful as I thought I was going to be. Then the pandemic happened. So as people like me in my position, how do how do we get help if we don't have employees so I don't have payroll? Is this just not for me? It, because when I think of SBA, I'm thinking for a small business loan and I'm a small business. So because this is about um, COVID, does does this not apply to me? Because if so, then I'm not saying that I'm wasting my time. But, so that's not what I'm asking. But is there another option for somebody like me? Because now that I'm, um, I'm linked up with Genesis Block and I got my head on straight and I'm getting some very great advice for business. So now with the pandemic, I'm still a struggling business. So how do I get help in this situation or do I get help in this situation? Mm -hmm. And all of these uh, COVID relief packages have been primarily targeted towards businesses that were in operation from February, 2020 on that were hit by the pandemic. And it, that's why they're focused on just uh, COVID relief. Um, if you want to apply for regular business, it sounds like you know, regular business to start up or regular business growth uh, funds, then that would be a regular SBA loan. Okay. So yeah, so I would reach out to a bank and it, you certainly can uh, contact me and I'll walk you through what the regular SBA program is to borrow money to get a small business loan. Okay, thank you. Sure. Great. Um, any other questions from any of the peanut gallery here? I do see, which, who, who with Genesis, is, is that Tracy or Gerard on? I can just lock. Yeah, I think. Who's on with Genesis Block? Hey there, it's Gerard and Tracy. Hi. And, uh, hi there. And um, thank you guys for put, putting the word out there to, to your group. And again, we hope all of these people, um, not just the members of Genesis Block, I mean, if there's questions, the, um, I know Stephanie is a busy, busy lady, but I've never had it. The only thing I'll get from her when she can't answer is she's in a meeting right now, but she has <laughs> great answer. And the same with David, I, I brag about having a wonderful CPA that I don't care. Well, I shouldn't say this because his wife's going to kill me, but it um, doesn't matter what time we call, David answers. And I know Eric Lout will attest to that. Oh, yeah. So we're very blessed to have great, great um you know, people involved in this in downtown Wilmington and are here to help each other. Um, again, if anybody has any questions, we're we trying to have a comment. Oh, yeah. Comment. 
painter Andy from I Love New York Pizza. Feel free to unmute yourself, but he did give a comment that said, thank you so much for holding this and thank you to David and Stephanie, but Andy, feel free to unmute yourself if you want. He's listed as painter. And we- Painter that works with Dino. Dino, yeah, I guess. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other thing too, you know, DBA for all of you, even you new business owners um, and everything, we will also be listing um, David and Stephanie on the website as our professionals this evening, but that's DBA's mission is to, to help support bit, the small businesses all throughout downtown. So even if any of you are in conversation, and I know Terry feels this way, she's talking to people all the time. She can't get walk down the block without talking to somebody. But seriously, if anybody gets any questions from anyone, just you know, point them our way because I'm sure uh, Terry or any of the other, we have Eric Lount, we have um, Robert Rosenberg on, and then Tracy with Genesis Block, they're all board members. We all would be more than happy to, to get the help that, you know, to, in the right hands to you. Um, we want successes. All right, let's see, we have another thing. Oh, sorry, no mic. This is Andy from I Love New York Pizza and I would like to say thanks to all for the great info. Sorry, no mic, not working. Awesome. You know, I got one quick question on the DBA email that we received uh, says key updates for PPP. This is the showing the panelists who's gonna be here and all that. But the first bullet point I'm not too sure what this means. Borrowers, borrowers can set their PPP loan covered period to be in any length between eight and 24 weeks to best suit their business needs. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? The use of the money. So the first round, they were very strict on you had to use the money within this many weeks. Right. Now you can choose to use the money between eight and 24 weeks. So. But don't you want to just choose 24 weeks? I don't know, I'm trying to understand. It depends how much payroll you have and if you have to pay people right now and you have to use the money. Yes, it's completely up to you. Yeah, you certainly can stretch it out if you can or if you want to over but that nowhere, period of time. No, nowhere does it define that you have to declare what your weekly period is, so that- Correct. In other words. You don't declare I'm doing 24 weeks. You just do 24 weeks. You just have 25 weeks to use it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. I don't know if David's talking or he's on. Okay. No, he's not talking to us. <laughs> he's still here, but he's muted. David, you want to unmute? No, he talk, sometimes he talks to himself. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's having a good time. You're still muted, Dave. You're still muted. David, find that button again. <laughs> oh, oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. it. <laughs> As you say, the uh, that that forgiveness period, you, you don't have to decide that until you're filing your forgiveness. It, it's nothing to you. And and the assumption is you'll take the max and get forgiven. So that's there you go. I, that's that's why I saw that. I'm like, I just kind of shook. I was kind of shaking my head on that one. I, all right, I, I think it's there in case you want to pull the trigger early for some reason and file for forgiveness. But I, I highly recommend against filing forgiveness generally. I don't, I don't think, you know, the the terms of forgiveness uh, do nothing but loosen as time goes by, and the and the applications simplify, so eventually you end up just waving it away. And that's what I thought. Under a certain X amount of money, it was just going to go away. But I, um, my bookkeeper, Chris Mallory, is my bookkeeper. So in town, he was supposed to be in the call, but he couldn't make it. But uh, we we went through and submitted what we were supposed to do. Um, I, other business owners are saying, hey, I'm just gonna wait because it's only gonna get easier. I won't have to do so much. But, you know, we, it kind of didn't take us too long to do it anyway. So we did it. <laughs> Good, so, no harm, no foul. Let's hope you no got harm. fully forgiven. That's the important thing. Yeah. You know, the interesting thing about this though is that um, you have to have used your first PPP for the eligible uses in order to get the second PPP. So if you haven't set us, received your forgiveness yet, my, you know, there is concern as a lender that what if the person, even though they said they used the money for payroll, didn't use the money for payroll. That means they're not eligible for the second PPP. 
are the allowable uses in the first one. Uh, you know, I, quite frankly, I have customers who didn't necessarily use the PPP loan exactly for payroll because they had uh, their payroll, their staff couldn't come back, they were closed. So, so that means they're not eligible for the second round PPP. We need to see that documentation that they used it for the allowable uses. So you're gonna, no matter what, and when you apply for the second PPP, you're gonna have to show that you used it for those allowable uses that technically would uh, be forgiven so it's kind of like a catch-22, right? If you show that you used it correctly, you're pretty much forgiven. So then that would make you eligible to apply for a second PPP. Makes sense. What do you think, David? I, I don't expect to ever have to provide any kind of proof that all of the first PPP was spent, but. Well, you know what though? It's mm -hmm. in that application. So if a customer clicked, yes, they used it correctly and they didn't, I, I said, I, I don't expect to ever provide any proof or documentation. I didn't say they're not going to certify that they did it, but I'm just saying there is no requirement that I'm aware of, and there is no discussion of one where you're going to be required to document that use. Now, you may know something I don't know, but I have no knowledge of that. I, my suggestion is this. If you got a PPP loan and you used it for payroll, just get it forgiven and be done with it. I mean, why have that hanging over your head? If you are, if you know you use the money correctly and it's a one-page application, be done and focus on the next PPP loan. I mean, I don't um, know. That be. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to recommend my clients not apply for forgiveness anytime in the immediate future. But that's it. a runaway. <laughs> Did I hear my name? Sorry. No, no, <laughs> no. No. <laughs> we just have, putting something in the oven. We have a tennis match going here. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You know, what if they I'm right here. Money? You know what though? I, my, I, you know, I'm like the other side of the coin. I'm like, if I don't get my forgiveness now, what if they change their mind later and say, you know what, we we're going to scrutinize these because there's been 50% fraud, and then I and I'll kick myself because I didn't get it forgiven and be done. <laughs> if you didn't use it correctly, then yeah, maybe take your time. I suppose get that's up. possible. True. Yeah. My father oh, used to always say, Joan, you'll be the one that gets caught. If they yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's, so one, that's, my, that's my cloud over my head. And then the loans under 150 forgiveness. I mean, it was quick. It's a one pager you submitted and you're, you're, it was, a, I mean, it was an instant forgiveness. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions, guys? Hey, you know, you're, you've got somebody that bills, you know, both of these people make big bucks per hour. So we've got them free. So <laughs> Any, anything else you can throw their way right now that could help you just let them know and if you think of something later um i david and stephanie do you mind if we um put a contact email up for you guys yeah perfect okay i have a question okay. from andy andy said one more time in how many weeks did we have to use the first pay ppp for payroll See, the first one it was extended to 24 yeah to 24. it started out at eight and then they extended yeah then it extended out to 24 weeks yeah did that take it to the end of the year what was the sunset on it it was october wasn't it i, I guess it depends on when you actually got your funding yeah exactly okay right it was All right, Andy, Andy yeah, it did take it to the, you know what you're right, Jonah did take it to the end of the year because the last I think it year, was. I yeah. thought it did sunset then. Yeah. Okay. So December 31st, you had to use it, Andy. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Because it's 713 and I'm gonna walk down to Fortunate Glass. <laughs> yeah, I had to bring my I had to bring my own. Oh, good sounds, for you. sounds good, good to me. To, I would love to, but I'm gonna be here for hours doing PPP applications. So. <laughs> well, Thank Hell's you. Kitchen is open Thank right you. now too. So <laughs> Thank you. that's right. Crazy. Thank you, Terry. Um, oh, thank you. Appreciate it. You're pulling us together. Well, hey, what what we're here for and for those of you who've not gotten involved in DBA, you don't have to be a downtown business owner to be involved. Um, but 
please keep your ears and eyes open and join us on some of the Zoom meetings and get it. The group is very social and a lot of fun, but this is why we're here is just to help each other. Yeah, and if you want to stay informed and everything, go on the website and there's a section where you can sign up for our newsletter. I think it's at the bottom of the page and there's a newsletter that goes out every Friday and then other ones in between with um, particular announcements such as this, the PPP. So, you know, feel free, new business owners, small business owners here online. Um, that's what we want. We want to support you. So just, you know, it's uh, dbawilmington.org. Okay, guys, thank you, thank you. Go get your PPP process. And um, this is 2021, it's definitely gonna be a lot better. I hope so. <laughs> we didn't age, we didn't age in 2020. That's <laughs> we would have, we skipped 2020. We'll see you guys later. Thanks Bye, everyone. everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye everybody. Bye. Bye.